I am praying for Andrew. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and to bless Andrew as he speaks for you and your words and bless him as this wonderful day and to bless everybody to believe in God and the Holy Spirit. And dear Jesus, amen. Amen. Good morning slash afternoon and happy Sabbath, my... Yeah, yeah, let me see if taking this off will help. Uh, there we go. That should be better, right? Oh, okay. Oh, I already took it off anyways. <laughs> well, happy Sabbath, my friends, family, brothers, sisters, mothers, and fathers in Christ. Before we begin, let us pray. Father, let us present ourselves approved before you as workmen who needeth not be ashamed, seeking to rightly divide the word of truth. As you have cast our sin as far as the east is from the west, so too cast our doubts, worries, shame, and fear. Continue to leadeth us to green pastures and protect us from the wolves hidden in sheep's clothing. Let your will be our will, God, and let your ways be our ways. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. These words were written by the prophet Jeremiah, who had been given them When he writes these words, Israel has been taken captive by Babylon. They were at the lowest of lows. They had lost, which would have been seen as their God being the lesser God to Babylon's gods. In other words, the Babylonians' gods would have been seen as greater than the God of Israel. The fact that they had been defeated, captured, taken prisoner, forcefully brought into a foreign land with a foreign culture, foreign laws, and foreign religion. This was the lowest of the lows for Israel. Some of them, I'm sure, thought that this was it, that God had abandoned them. Others probably thought, how could this happen to us, the chosen people of the one true and only God? This is why the Lord, through his prophet Jeremiah, writes, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Little did Israel know that they would be under foreign rule for thousands of years. But what they did know was that God was with them, had a plan for them, and that there was hope to be had. And what was this hope that God was providing to the people of Israel? Why, it was a savior, of course. Someone to come and defeat and take vengeance on those who had captivated Israel. Through Jeremiah, God reminds the people that he's got this, that they don't have to worry because he will be providing that savior to them. Just like Nathan and the prophet Isaiah had foretold. God spoke through Nathan and said, When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 
I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed before you. And that was Nathan to King David. And Isaiah wrote, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. This was the hope. This was the promise. A chosen one by God to deliver his people out of bondage, a savior. They knew not his name, but that he would be called Emmanuel. They knew not what he looked like, nor what day he would come, but they did know the signs to watch out for. Now, as all of you know, yesterday was Christmas. And many of us both gave and received gifts, visited with our immediate family, or spent the day entirely with God alone because we didn't want to risk exposing our friends, family, or even ourselves to the virus that has taken over the world this past year. But leading up to Christmas Day, there are signs that it is coming. The Dollar Tree begins selling their Christmas supply at the end of September, and At the beginning of November, the music on the radio begins to play Christmas music. Stores have set up their holiday displays. Black Friday advertises Christmas gift ideas. And the list goes on and on and on. And in the back of your mind, you just know that Christmas is near. Yet you don't believe that it's as truly close as it appears. There are signs that Christmas time is here and what a joyous time it is. We, like the Israelites, have an idea of what we are supposed to be looking out for before the big event. There are clues and hints before it happens. Unlike us, the Israelites had no idea when their Savior would would arrive. Whereas we know that Christmas takes place every year on the 25th of December. And as I learned this morning, since uh, it's been taking place on the 25th of December, since the year 336 A.D. However, there is a connection between Christmas and the Savior for the Israelites. The question then becomes, who is this Savior? And the answer is simple. The Savior that had been foretold by the prophets was and is the one and only Jesus from Nazareth. As mentioned above, earlier the prophet Isaiah wrote, Therefore the Lord will himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And when people think about the story of the birth of Jesus, many automatically think of the Gospel of Luke. And while I do enjoy reading the Gospel of Luke's account of the Immaculate Conception, I much prefer the account that is given in the Gospel of Matthew. Because while Luke set out to chronologize the events that took place in Jesus' life, Matthew set out to prove that this Jesus of Nazareth was really the Christ. Matthew begins his Gospel with the statement, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. In his opening statement, he states his belief that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior, the promised one, one, the deliverer of the people of Israel. And now, as much as I would enjoy reading the 42 generations of the genealogy of Christ to you, I think it would be best if we skipped over it, but not overlook it. The genealogy, while long, is important because it shows that Jesus is a descendant of not only Abraham, but of King David, whom God had promised him that one of his descendants' kingdoms would be established forever. The genealogy shows that connection between King David David and Jesus, whom is the Christ. Matthew continues by writing, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, 
was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was broken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Matthew again sets out to prove that the very Jesus that him and the other 11 apostles had been preaching about was in fact the very Savior that had been foretold by the prophets. He's saying to the non-believers, Hey, look, look, here, here's what the scripture says. And here's the story of Christ's birth. See the connection? It's him. It's really him. He is the son of God. He continues with, Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, among the rulers of Judah, for out of you... Bethlehem of Judea, for it is, thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Again, Matthew is pointing to what the prophet said and to what really happened. Comparing them both and showing that Jesus' coming was the fulfillment of prophecy concerning the Messiah of the Israelites. He's again like, look, even Herod understood this prophecy and understood that there was to be another king. That's why he trusted the scribes when they told him where the baby was supposed to be born. Come on, y'all still, y'all still really think that this, this Jesus dude who just died via crucifixion isn't the Messiah? Hold, hold my grape juice for a second here. And he continues, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, They departed for their own country another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was, and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Herod sends the wise men to seek out and find the child, and commands them to return and inform him as to the child's whereabouts. And when they get there, they recognize his royalty. 
They recognize the significance of whom they are before, and they begin, begin to worship him. A child, they begin to worship a child. And these wise men are but foreigners to the land of Judah. These men aren't even Israelites. And yet they know who this child is before them. Unfortunately, so did King Herod. And God, knowing Herod's heart, sent his messenger to warn the wise men and inform them to depart and take a different route. He also sends his messenger to Joseph so that he and his family may flee to Egypt and find safety. And as Matthew points out, this is also done so that the prophecy of God may be fulfilled in order that he might say that he called his son out of Egypt. Continuing on, we get to the depressing part of the story of Jesus' young life. Matthew writes, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. Herod was indiscriminate. He punished mothers and fathers by killing their young children, while all they could do was stand by and watch. It is disturbing the lengths that people will go to to preserve their power. And this story shows us why this world is in need of a savior to save us from the darkness. Matthew pointed out that while this act was heinous, it did fulfill what the prophet Jeremiah had prophesied concerning, giving further credence to the claim that this Jesus of Nazareth was indeed the Christ, the savior, the Messiah. Matthew ends the story of the first year, few years of Jesus' life by writing, Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Matthew points out, points to the chaotic childhood of Jesus. He then turns to scripture and he points out what happened to Jesus are just some of the signs pointing to the greatest gift that this world could ever receive, a savior. Through 26 more chapters, we follow Matthew as he recounts to us the story of Jesus' ministry, his temptations, his teachings, his examples of those who had true faith, the ups and downs, being sought after by the Pharisees and the Sadducees so that they may accuse him of blasphemy and punish him with death. This leads us into the ending chapters of Matthew, where we have this hope, this hope of the Savior, and more proof. Beginning in Matthew chapter 27, verse 26, we read, Then he, Pilate, released Barabbas to them. And when he had scorched Jesus, he delivered, the, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. 
Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come to a place called Gol Golgotha, that is to say, place of a skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who by, passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if you will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into, into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus Christ is that Savior, our Savior, the one who came into this corrupt world to save us from sin, dying a very slow and very painful death on a cross being dead for three days, and rising on the third, all while giving us the greatest gift of all, eternal life, with him and our Father.
No verse summarizes Jesus' mission and accomplishment better than John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever may believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And Paul makes this message even clearer when he writes in his letter to the Romans, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Go now and remember the hope and the greatest gift that God has given you through the life, ministry, and death, and rather the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Savior. Please bow your heads with me as I pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this blessed day. Thank you that though while it uh, looks like it's rainy and cloudy outside, that everybody here is safe and have come together to worship you and get to know you better, Lord. Thank you just for being in our lives daily and continue to be with us as we continue on in this pandemic and these troubling times, Lord. I ask that you be with these people, my friends, family, brothers, sisters, mothers, and fathers in Christ as we go out today and this upcoming week. May we bless those around us and be lights in this world. In your name I pray, amen. you have a blessed week and we'll see you here next week god willing Amen. <laughs>